Hi, I'm Matthew Lissobe, Administrator at Arroyo Grande Care Center. And we're here to discuss why people are depressed, apathetic, hopeless in nursing homes. Uh, there's a lot of work being done. Uh, the culture change movement is very strong right now. Uh, but I'm a firm believer uh, these past few years that one of the critical areas that needs to be addressed is the need to be needed. And I think all of us in the profession are trying to figure out what we can do about that. And one thing we've stumbled onto here at Compass Health is that residents in nursing homes truly are just care receivers. Uh, and that means no matter what j kind of job we do as care providers, we can provide the most compassionate, wonderful care, clinical excellence, it still places the resident in a position of receiving and their job is essentially to thank us all day long. Uh, so how do we get beyond that? That's the question. And something we've come up with here at Arroyo Grande Care Center is we've actually started the farm, which is a fully functioning produce farm behind the center that was designed by our therapist to be completely wheelchair accessible. The residents are doing everything. So they are, there's a 48 foot greenhouse, raised beds, 40, 26 fruit trees, pumpkin patch. Uh, the residents are growing their own produce in their wheelchairs. They are taking that produce across the street to the California grandmother's mobile home park uh, and having a free farmer's market for them with all of the produce that they are growing. Uh, it's an incredible sight and it's giving our residents a reason to get out of bed in the morning because they know that they're needed. When we go over to the grandmother's park and give the food away, how does that make you feel? Yes, oh, that made me so happy. All the people were so appreciative of it. And uh, I knew some of the people before they uh, even came to receive the food and they were surprised to see me and I was just as surprised to see them because I love people and I love talking to them. So here yeah, all these people were so happy with what we gave them and I gave out radishes, green onions and carrots and I was so happy to do it because the people really appreciated getting it and uh, I just love being part of anything that makes other people happy so uh, I'll, I'll take part in anything like this and uh, because I love it and uh, I love making people happy and things that make me happy. Yeah, and they really, they take pride in knowing that what they have planted, planted the seeds and watching it get bigger and coming out here and seeing it blossom <laughs> and then picking it we have one one resident who planted radishes she planted the seeds she specifically took care of them and then she harvested them and gave them away at the grandmother's park and That's she great was to be, uh, all through yeah. the whole process yeah she was handing them pushing them take them <laughs> i planted these and i harvested them take them <laughs> so that's good yeah. You know, going back to how the role reversal of the activities department and being more of a support system, it really, um, coming out here and having the residents do it themselves is very important and watching them take that pride in themselves 
to do, doing what they're doing versus me coming along and saying, oh, don't worry, Betty, I can do that for you. Here, let me, let me pick the bean and put it in your basket. Oh, Betty, you just picked that bean, good job. Versus the resident who picks the bean and puts it in their basket and it takes them four or five minutes to do, but it's the self-satisfaction, the self, you know, the gratification that they did it themselves and that they're enjoying it. So we've really seen a big difference in the residents, um, just opinion of themselves and they feel better about themselves. They feel um, more pride in themselves and what they're doing. Much happier residents. Uh, you know, there's been, a, there's been a big change in our residents in the past six months. And I am big, I believe that I had a great activities program before this. <laughs> and I still believe that, but just that giving them the opportunity to do something for themselves and taking the step back and not doing it for them and not thinking that we're helping them by doing it for them has really made a huge change, drastic okay. change. Can residents in nursing homes with these challenges continue to be productive? And the answer is absolutely yes. And as you can see on the farm, uh, we have raised beds, people in wheelchairs with all of these issues. Uh, some of the residents that you see watering the vegetables right now uh, have dementia. And you put a watering hose in their hand and show them the vegetables and they understand uh, what they need to do and they do it uh, very effectively. The uh, people harvesting, we have people with severe contractures and strokes and it may take them 40 minutes to harvest 50 uh, peas or string beans. But let me tell you, when they do it and then they're there at the mobile home park and people who are on fixed incomes are receiving from them this produce, this gift that they're giving, and that resident can say, you know, I picked this myself for you. It's hard to understand the impact of that unless you are actually there and seeing it. It's tremendous. Having been involved in skilled nursing for 15 years or so, I've seen so many of these people, I am absolutely convinced still uh, could give in a productive, meaningful way if given the opportunity, uh, sitting and, and waiting. And there's nothing wrong with what we do. We have tremendously skilled, capable, compassionate people working in nursing homes. Uh, we have excellent entertainment and we all love to be entertained. But life is more than receiving and life is more than entertainment. You know, life is being needed, having purpose, having responsibility, being able to give, being able to serve. And it's rare, very rare for anyone uh, of our residents to not uh, want to be part of that uh, when they understand that they're truly needed. A great example of how this can change someone's life is Gladys. Gladys came to us, uh, was depressed, didn't want to be in a nursing home, and would not come out of her room. The staff worked, her, her family, her daughter, very dedicated, uh, worked just about every day on trying to get her to come out of the room, and her constant response was, I'm fine. Just leave me alone. Um, you know, we tried all sorts of activities uh, and same response, she wouldn't come out. So one, about a month into the farm, I uh, came in to talk to Gladys and explained uh, the farm uh, that we needed help. Uh, we had the farmer's market coming up. We weren't prepared. We needed more hands. And her response was, leave me alone, I'm fine, I don't need anything. 
And I told her, Gladys, this isn't about you. I know you're fine. I know you don't need anything. This is about we need help. We don't have enough people out there. You know, we've made this commitment to the grandmother's mobile home park to have this free farmer's market for people who can't afford it. And what I'm saying is I need your help. If you don't want to help, you don't have to. And she said, well, wait a minute. What are you talking about? And I explained it again. This time she was listening. And she said, well, I've helped people my whole life. And I said, well, that's all I'm asking. So if you want to help, we could use your help. If you don't want to help, that's fine. And she said, well, get me out of bed. From that point on, Gladys was spending hours every week in her wheelchair out on the farm. She went over, as you can see, some of the pictures. She's been over to the farmer's market, letting each person know that she herself spent the time and effort to uh, cultivate this produce, to water, to weed, to harvest, and uh, how thankful she was to be able to do it. Her daughter could not believe the change in her. It's like she's back with the living. Oh, it makes me feel wonderful. Uh -huh. It makes me feel wonderful when I have a baby. In fact, when I get better, I have to take a nap. <laughs> that makes you feel wonderful, too. <laughs> no, it's a blessing to the family, to the uh, community. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the grandmother's, the grandmother's uh, park. Wonderful because the time is so bad. It makes people out there without more food and more they are doing what you want to have. So I want a, a situation like this. I want to, yes. I want to. I'm going to go and give food to the, give food to the poor. I don't like the poor, people that don't have money. I don't like the word poor. Oh, okay. People who don't have money. I sure will. You sure will. I'll be the first one on the table. Okay. Good. Be the first one on the table. I'm already done with you. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The magic is not in asking the residents if they want to participate because a lot of them feel like they're not able to participate at this point. The magic is in letting them know that I need your help. People at the mobile home park are on fixed incomes and can't afford fresh produce. And we need more hands out there to help with this. And when people hear that, it is difficult to tell someone when they look you in the eye and tell you we need your help to serve people that are less fortunate in our community. It's hard to say no. And so that gets them over the hump. And once they get over the hump and actually start serving, then something incredible happens. The light comes back on and uh, it's just amazing. Okay, hi, I'm Ed Williams with uh, the maintenance department here at Roy Grandy Care Center. Um, Basically, a staff of two people, myself and another helper, uh, established this from, I think we started in November, and we just slowly chipped away at it, and we continue to chip away at it, and it just slowly evolves. The patients 
really enjoy coming out here, um, getting their hands dirty, so to speak, with the <laughs> soil, and um, feeling like they're creating something, that they're giving, that they're doing something more important than themselves. And um, we've had a lot of comments from our patients saying, you know, this is something I want to do. Can I continue to do this? Can I come back and help you guys? And um, I think it gives them a different perspective. They're going through some traumas in their own lives and trying to heal themselves and trying to get better. And then it puts a little bit of a turn on their perspective of life. And a lot of times these are older adults that you know are towards the end of their, their life, but realizing I could still give, realizing I could still uh, give to the community mm -hmm. and um, help people out. And it's not only them. We actually started this program with Velma Stricker. Uh, she uh, told me that, Matthew, if I don't have a farm or a garden to work in, I think I'm just really don't want to get out of bed. Um, and so that's what spurred this whole program on, was that statement by Velma. She said, Matthew, if you build me a greenhouse and a farm, I promise you I'll be out there every day and true to her word, she has gotten out of bed. But her being able to just get outside mm -hmm. and have a purpose, the fact that they take the produce across the street to low-income people to the grandmother's park and disperse it there so that they get benefit from it too. Even if it wasn't low-income people, I think it would be... Right, oh. right, I, I think, but I mean, this is this something that adds to it, I mm -hmm. think, for her. Um, because she's always liked to see people taken care of. And so this is, this is something that she's part of and she's doing. Definitely. Yeah. Well, this was the caretaker generation. And mm -hmm. they worked. They worked hard. My mom was a farm girl, and then she was a gardener all her life. And mm -hmm. getting her back out into that is just like bringing life back to her. It's okay. Thank you all very much for coming here. And we'll be seeing you again. And more beans and peas. Oh, okay. <laughs>